Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, if you are on following, please type one so we can uh, we can begin. Okay, I yeah, see we have a, um, a big um, number that uh, is in. Um, uh, let's see where we um, started last, where we ended last time. I know that at the end of the class, we had um, power challenges in the university and uh, we couldn't uh, we couldn't uh, basically um conclude the class so we will we will a bit unwind on the calculations that we were doing uh we're having then and then we we we, we conclude that bit but before i want to to share with you something um I'm going to send a link uh, in the chat. And you are going to, type to open that link and follow the, and, 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 and put a code that I will give you. It will just bring a page with a question. which I should have asked last time, but I want to see those who were there. Um, if, if, you, if you remember what it was. Okay, let me put up the link and then I, I send you the code. So please open up that link in your browser and answer, and answer the question. Um, and we see what you get. So can you see that? If you see that then this should have been asked last time so i'm asking it now uh, but then you can uh, you can uh, you can help us understand what it is
So the question is mention three king, uh, three key things you rant or then when we had the class, although we say we have run today, but yeah, so you can click on the link and you use the code that you see on the screen and then you you're able to, aha, uh -huh. so someone has said they run a carbon complete ash. Um, who else? Are you in class? Where else has been able to type something? Elemental composition, raw heating value, dry ash free composition, high heating value, elemental composition, uh, dry ash basis. So you see um, um, the ideas that um, people normalizing values, understanding high heating value and raw heating value. So you can see the commonality things that are uh, the words that are very common um, uh, from what you are sharing. Uh -huh. You see, Ash, um, I think they are all more about, you know, heating values, heating values, which is, uh, yeah, truly what we, part of the things that we discussed. So, so we can actually, through real time, be able to, to gather inputs into this, okay? Element, elements add up to 100%. How to calculate elements add up to 100%. Um, yeah, so you can see higher heating value and dry heating value and ash, dry ash basis, they still come out from uh, elemental composition. They come out prominently. And indeed, these are some of the things that we, we were able to to determine. So we have this tool that can help us uh, populate these kind of feedbacks, right? Feedback um, uh, for us as we as we move on. Okay. So keep keep your feedback uh, moving. I think that we are uh, we are uh, sixty four people or sixty four people listening in, so I expect more more views. Okay, let me see anything that bomb calorimeter measurement. <clears throat> that is a nice one. Uh, this is my first lecture. Someone says this is my first lecture. And then we have uh, volumetric analysis. These are some of the things that come out um, um, the, the prominent and independent bomb calorimeter measurement, energy contained in fuel, uh, complete carbon, um, run to the real burning. Uh -huh. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, so thank you so much, colleagues, for, for this feedback. Yeah, I think now we can proceed to, to sharing more. I think someone gross heating value. Uh, uh, let me see. Yeah, it's more or less of those. Okay, so I can stop sh sharing now, and then we can we can go back to to our calculations as we had them. So I will share again where we stopped. I, I, if you remember that then we were discussing this number and uh, let me add a bit. So, so we started, if you remember, we start, we had the composition of a sugar cane bagasse is given us 47%, 47.9% carbon, 5.6% percent hydrogen, 40.9 percent as oxygen, then we have nitrogen as 0 0.2 and ash as 3.4. So we said we calculate the composition of the fuel on dry ash free basis. We determine the 
high heating value and low heating values, and then the theoretical oxygen and air demands. And remember, those, those who are, you, you remember the start, stage one is to, to ensure that first of all, we are accounting for all the components, the, the mental composition is complete that all elements add up as someone has already give feed, uh, given feedback in the, in, the, in the task we're dealing, they should add up to 100%. So we said we list items, so we, in tabular form, carbon, hydrogen, sulfur, oxygen, nitrogen, those are the key elements we would expect to find in the, uh, these are key in, in, in the combustible fuels as we know. Um, then ash and moisture, ash yeah, as an inorganic uh, component, and moisture is something that comes from the external environmental conditions. So when you add them, we see that they, they are not talking about ash, but when we added them, we realized we found in this case, we would get about 98, and so we determined that moisture itself is 2%. Then we said stage two is to, a delete or remove ash and moisture from the composition and we said we use we use the comp the carbon component where we have the carbon component we divide by 100 percent minus the components of moisture and the and the and the air as we see as, as well, and, and the ash as we see them in the equation and then we add them up and we, we did the addition and we found that our elements the, the rest of the elements are left as they are it's only carbon where we do the recalculation. So the calculation is done as we showed you last time. And then after that, we normalize the, the composition so that our total is 100%. I, I think we did, this was the second example we did. So people should have no problem. And then we use the, the empirical formulae to calculate the high heating values, which in this case was gotten as 18.32 megajoules per kilogram or 18,318 kilojoules per kilogram. We can also use another empirical equation to determine the raw heating value by assuming that the water vapor and the, its energy that it, the, it contains is lost as we do the heating or burning. And so the raw heating value becomes 17,017 kilojoules per kilogram or 17.02 megajoules. We said the lower heating value is actually lower than the high heating value because we don't take, uh, we, we, don't, we don't use the energy in the steam or the moisture. So it's lost in the run. Now that was okay. So we would have done now the theoretical oxygen and air demand is what we never, we never calculated, but now this is a very, if you remember in, when we were determining, when we were running this theoretical oxygen demand, we said for a biomass based fuel, if we have a hydrocarbon, I'm going to type here, CXHY, we said the theoretical oxygen demand is calculated from X plus Y over four, if you remember. And then we said if it's a biomass, biomass best fuel like this in which case the uh, and there is oxygen z in which case the bagasse or biomass uh, the sugar cane is just that okay so in which case In which case, the, we have to determine the theoretical um, oxygen demand. Our value, if you remember, let me make this one big. We said it is equal to x plus y over four, y over four, then minus, sorry, y over four, then minus uh, z over two. Now, it's up to us then from this to determine what X is. 
So the carbon X is for carbon, Y is for hydrogen, and Z is for oxygen. So we need to define this. If we can define X, Y, and Z, then it is very easy for us to determine the oxygen demand. So we go back to, this requires you to go back to, to your composition uh, on dry ash-free basis. So we have carbon as 52%, we have hydrogen as 5.7%, we have oxygen as, we have, sorry, we have, uh, I think this is sulfur, we have zero. We have oxygen as 42%. We have uh, nitrogen as 0 0.21 and so on. These are the final values we determine after removing ash and moisture. So then to determine the X value, this is a very simple, a simple method. In fact, in, I, I shared a link uh, with the, with Anne uh, that contains the the material that we have looked at and some reading some textbook uh, if you check in the in the introduction to that combustion you will notice this you will find a material that can help okay let me just try to make this less so that they can actually fit so that it, this can help you so if you have determined the composition of carbon which in this case is fifty two percent. Then to determine the value of x, we actually divide the composition by the by the molecular weight of that element. In which case, for carbon, it would be 52.0. The x value for carbon will be 52.02. We divide by 12. So you get something like 4.33. Then hydrogen. Hydrogen is 5.75 we divide by one it's see it's see Malaysia weight is going to be one of course sulfur will be it is zero in this case but you would divide by by the, the, the Malaysia weight of sulfur uh, oxygen will be 42.02 divided by 16 and so on and so on so this becomes our x value, this is what we have as 4.3, our y is 5.7, our z is... Um, excuse me, sir. Yes. Excuse me, sir. Um, I wanted you to first clarify on the bit of the theoretical oxygen demand yeah. about the verification, like to get the oxygen demand, is it for the one that is A is equal to x plus y over 4 and the one which has said, and I did first clarify on that. I didn't really get it. Okay, so it depends on what you're dealing with. And now, of course, we, we already know that this, we already know the, the composition of the, of, the, of the fuel in question. So this is sugar cane by gas, and they have given us carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Already that one will mean that you can't use X plus Y over four only it will require that you use x plus y over 4 minus z over 2 because the, 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 the fuel contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. If it was something like kerosene and they just give you carbon and hydrogen, then obviously z is zero. So the, the oxygen is zero. You can still use this formula x plus y over 4 minus z over 2, but the, 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 the z value is going to be zero. That's why we could go back to hydro. So it will be just a simple, a simple hydrocarbon. But in our case, since we have oxygen, then we have to use the theoretical oxygen demand will be x plus y over two, so y over four minus z over two. That's the, the reason why we're using it. Because then we can determine x, we can determine y, we can determine z, just simply by getting the percentage composition divided by the molecular weight, and you get those values. So now, if we have determined x plus y over 4, so we have determined x, we have determined y, we have determined z. Uh, now our theoretical, just hold on a second. Our theoretical oxygen demand is equal to x over 4, which in this case is 4. Point, it is 4.34 plus y over 4, which is 5.75 divided by 4, then minus z, which is 
2.63 divided by 2. That's how you determine your theoretical oxygen demand. So once you have the composition on dry free basis, then for each element, you can determine, you can divide by its molecular weight and then you get its proportion within the, 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 the within its, uh, its formula, its, its chemical formula, so to speak. Now, once you determine, of course, what matters, what bands in this case is, is it would be carbon and hydrogen, all this formula keeps quiet on the impact of sulfur. If we had sulfur, we know it burns, but largely the, 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 the calculation is based on burning carbon and, and hydrogen. If you saw the equation that we used to determine these values, it is carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and you add oxygen and you get carbon dioxide and water. So at least it's talked about sulfur. So in determining the theoretical oxygen demand, we keep quiet on sulfur. We, the, the, the formula and the method only relies on carbon and hydrogen. So this is how you get the theoretical oxygen demand. And of course, the theoretical air demand. So let's see, this is... Um, Can someone tell us how to get the theoretical air demand? How would we determine the theoretical air demand? Let me pick one participant. Rogers, I have one. I have one, Rogers. Do you know how we determine the theoretical air demand? Please unmute your mic and answer. No, actually, I don't know how to get it. Okay. Um, who can help? Justin Okot, Augustine Okot. Well, <clears throat> I don't remember how to how to get it. Uh huh. Let me see another enervalent Conrad. Okay, on, on Conrad. I know. <laughs> Conrad, your network is a bit shaky. But if someone says they know who, who is that? Me. Lisa. Uh, let me see who is who is who is answering. Which I think. Hmm. Solomon. Yes. Times 100. I didn't hear you very well, but I, I, I hear you say 21 uh, and then something divided by 21, which in this case, <laughs> I, I, you just say it one more time. Uh -huh. Times what? Okay, uh, someone who had him can help me. I, I somehow I am in trouble. Yes. Yes, yes Charles. Uh, honest. Oh, honest, always, yes. Yes. So he said it's oxygen air demand times 100 over 21, which is oxygen air demand over 0 0.21. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. So he's right, yes. So we said if we have, thank you, we, we thank you both and all members who have attempted. It is the oxygen demand, which in this case is 4.46. We divide by 0 0.21. That's, the, that's the, the, the discussion that we had last time. So the, the theoretical oxygen demand, we use the x, uh, y, and z in calculation, and then we divide by 0 0.21. And then we get the theoretical <laughs> air demand. Uh, uh, Faust. 
Yes. <laughs> so I'm really lost. I don't know, but I'm lost from where. <laughs> <laughs> like after finding those values for x, y, and z, z, then the rest I'm lost. Okay, you do you remember the? Okay, you remember the? Okay, just hold on a second. I think let me first. Okay, uh, let me see what I can do. Um. Uh, and then I, I let me dig out something to show you okay <laughs> so i'm going to to mute so you can unmute if you are not speaking so we don't get a feedback but let me let me try to dig out to um let me first stop sharing and then I can dig it up. Okay, so let me share screen. Okay, so you you see you do remember this discussion we had before? Remember who was that? Yes. Yeah. So we we said that if you have a fuel, we we write its equation. For example, carbon plus uh, oxygen is equal to CO two. We said, of course, here in this case, um, we need one more of, of, of oxygen to burn one more of fuel, so we can determine the theoretical oxygen demand. But and then we said, if we have a, a number of moles, for example, the theoretical oxygen demand, the air demand is divided by zero point two one. So in this case, you can see. For burning methane into carbon dioxide and water, we need the theoretical oxygen demand is two. Okay? But then the theoretical air demand is two divided by 0 0.21, which in this case becomes 9.5. But I wanted to show you something. We also discussed that if we have a hydrocarbon, let's say uh, carbon hydrogen, this fuel, we burn it, we get again oxygen, uh, sorry, carbon dioxide and water. And then we determine that the the theoretical air demand in this case, oxygen demand is x plus y over 4. Okay, so if we know x and y in the fuel, then we should be able to determine that demand. Then, if you divide this demand by 2.0.21, then you get the air demand. If we also had the, this fuel, if you have a biomass based fuel like this, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, then the theoretical oxygen demand is x plus y over 4 minus z over 2. And if we were to divide demand is x plus what we get here by 0 0.21, then we get the, the, the air demand. So I, I just wanted to make sure that you remember this. I know that maybe it's some time now. Uh, and that therefore people might, might struggle to remember this, but that's what we are dealing with okay so now i will go back to to to, to the calculation and say um, that that's how you determine so we determine x and y and then we are able to determine these values yeah? so the, you you needed to go back and remember and remember this but that's basically generally how you how you would deal with this, okay? Do you have any any question on that?
Okay, so then if that's not question, then we can move to what we are meant to discuss today. And I will do a bit quickly so that um, I think we shall devote some other time to do the, 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 the calculation itself. Eh? Okay. So let's see. Let me share my screen. Okay, so we have been last time we were, we were discussing. Um, Um, are we still all there? I seem to have had a problem with my connection. If you are still there, please type one. Okay, what is it that the audio is not coming out? Okay, good. Okay, thank you. I, I, I thought we had lost each other. Somehow I, I got disconnected here and I didn't know what it was. But today we are discussing um, the heat of combustion. And we, we, the, the general thing is that heat of combustion is the energy released as heat when the compound undergoes complete combustion with oxygen under standard conditions. Uh, you see the language is more is related to, 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 to the, the heating value, but the heating value, except the heating value we are saying is the energy contained in a, in a certain quantity of fuel, okay? Here we are saying when that energy is released, the heat of combustion is what the energy quantity of energy we get. So the, when we calculate the heat of combustion, in, in many ways it's actually more or less uh, as heat of, uh, sorry, the heating value, if we are able to actually burn the fuel and get all that fuel out. So you might have energy contained in the fuel, but, okay, let me see someone, maybe to mute the mic. Okay, we may, we, you may have a certain, let's say we said a kilo of, of bagasse could be 17, could have the energy of 17 megajoules per kilogram. But when you burn that fuel, chances are that you may not get all the heat out for various reasons, eh? including technological or environmental conditions or some other chemistry that happens. So, so, so in one way we can say heat of combustion is, it would be it would equate to the heating value, although we have to be careful there because you may not get all the heat that is in the fuel at combustion. But we say the heat of combustion is the energy release as heat when the compound undergoes complete combustion with oxygen under standard conditions. And the units, in most cases, they refer it as kilojoules per mole, but you could also, if you have determined it already in kilojoules per mole, you could actually calculate it in kilojoules per kilogram, which is a unit that we have seen with the heating value, okay? And how do we determine this? This is normally through a calculation if you have not done an experiment. It's calculated, it's calculated as a difference between the heat of formation of the product and the reactance. So if we have a fuel and we burn this fuel, then we get some products. Let's say carbon plus oxygen, you get carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is a product, oxygen, so the oxygen and the carbon are reactants. And then as a result, this, this reaction provides heat. So it's exothermic, it gives out heat. Now, to determine the heat of combustion, we get the heat of formation, we treat the products, we add up the heat of formation of the product, then we subtract the heat of formation of, of, the, of the reactants. Maybe you, you, you can ask, so we can simplify that the heat of combustion or heat of reaction, in this case is the difference between the heats of formation of the product 
and uh, heat of formation of the of the reactant cells we have them. Okay. So heat of formation. What is heat of formation of the product or of of a reactant? So we say the more heat of formation of a compound is equal to its enthalpy change is basically when one mole of the compound is formed at 25 degrees centigrade and one atom from elements in its stable form. So for example, if you have carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide is a compound. It is formed from carbon and oxygen. So it's, it's the elements that form carbon dioxide is carbon and oxygen. So when they react at 25% and at what one atmosphere to form that carbon dioxide, then we are referring to the entropy change. The change in entropy, the, the change in the measure of the total energy of that reaction. Normally we refer to that as the heat of formation. So the, for every compound, there is some heat of, more heat of formation that is attached to it when it was being formed. And the good news is that most of these are, are tabulated, they are tables. I will show you shortly. They are tables of heat of formation for various, various compounds. So you won't be struggling to determine one. So all you need to know is I have a certain fuel. It is going to react with the oxygen and I will produce some products and heat. So if I have to determine the heat of combustion, I needed to 